Hey everybody, welcome to turn three for Conrad's Commandos in Blue Sector. So we are moving in on a recovery mission um, because I could not get a two skull base attack mission. We are attacking the base or one of the two bases remaining. Uh, Riggers Wreckers are, is attacking the other um, base and at this point in time I believe the victory has already been secured. So we're moving forward. So this is a two skull recovery mission. now. Uh, according to the rules, if we choose a recovery mission instead of a destroy base, uh, you got to take it at a half a skull higher. But unfortunately, I could only get one against the clans, which means we reduce that by a half a skull. So this is still a two skull recovery mission. Now, we're going to be facing off against two lances here. Um, so that should bring it pretty much equal. Now, um, Conrad's Commandos did have a backup mech. A hunchback that they haven't used quite yet, but because this um, uh, Fist of Dorm wanted me to, to leave that in reserve just in case, but because this is against the clans, I thought since they're going to have extra mechs, we might as well bring it just in case we need it. Um, Black Mamba is actually out for two turns because of the wound she suffered in the last battle. So we're going to move forward here. I chose to drop a little farther back. Now, I could have gone in here, but that puts us dangerously close to both lances. Um, both bases. So I'm hoping that by starting here we can get some long range attacks in on whoever's here, draw them out, take them down, move forward, and then take out the remaining remainder of the defenders. Um, I just hope they don't get any like reinforcements and they hope they don't got a lot of long range units. Uh, but we're going to move, I think, as far Gordon. forward here initially as we can and hopefully get some sensors on. Um, Ultimately, I'd like to be able to get within melee range, but I don't know if that's actually going to happen. On the move. It's going to be a tricky one because the, the you know the clan mechs have got so many long range weapons. So this uh, hunchback's got a pair of ER medium lasers, a medium laser, and an AC10 with a wide variety of ammo. Um, so hopefully, it's able to help out in this battle. We'll see how it goes. We've got uh -huh. no sensors on still. This guy is just going to sit here. I think we'll put it in the trees right here. And leave it here. And I think we'll put you here. Just until we know what we're up against. Still quiet, eh? That's interesting. I don't like going along this ridge here. Because we're getting too dangerously close to the other other side where the other mechs are. Let's get down here. See if we can get some sensors Fire on. Okay, we got some sensors on. At least we get an idea of what we're up against here. So we got a us scout, which is nothing. Locust 2C could be dangerous. Another Locust 2C and a Kit Fox. Okay, so four lights so far. You can come down here. Confirm. All right. Um, let's not put you. Can I actually get down anywhere here without jumping? I think I gotta go all the way around. Well, let's move along here. We'll go to there. Order received. All right. Let me know when you need me. Okay, you guys just hang on. Now, I might switch these guys into active ECM mode here in a second. Active ECM mode's got a fail chance to it. It reduces the the uh, sensor's defense on the mech that it's on, but also increases on the one that's around it. It might cycle through them. We'll see. If they're not targeting the... Well, I don't think they've got the ranged attack to target the, the uh, vehicles at the back, so we might be okay without having to do that. Commander. Um, let's stay out of the water. That's actually really good. Acknowledged. So this guy's got a level, I think he's got a level 3 targeting computer in it. Yeah, we gotta take this guy out. Okay, one on, one miss, but we got some sensor Standard. deprivation, so that's good. Uh, let's sprint along here. 
think we got a chance for lasers to shoot here. No, the LBX-20. I keep forgetting this is a clan, so it's got like longer range on the LBX. Uh, we'll take the 26. Alright, 11 points. Waiting for orders. Better than nothing. Let's get over here. Worst case scenario, oh, we got sight on over here now. Clint 2C, Jenner 2C. Not too bad. Uh, let's hang on to the sensors for tougher mechs later on. Nice shot. Inflicted some heavy we only got five turns of sensors, that's why I want to save them. Waiting on you, Commander. Uh, we not have the ability to target the uh, locust? We do from here. I want to just stay, oh there we go. Nice blue line. We'll take that. Wow, 18, huh? Well, still better than nothing, I guess. Hey, stand still when I'm attacking you. Yeah, I think he is. All right, where are these guys coming from now? Let's hope they don't get a reserve lance or something silly like that. That'll get us killed for sure. This guy's got a pair of large pulses. He's got two large pulses and looks like a lot of good heat sinking. It's not overheating there. Good to go. What is? Eight percent. What if? It only goes to ten. Hang on for a minute. No problem. You, on the other hand, rolling. We got 15 turns of fire, and so we might as well take a pot shot. Five percent. Wow, even worse. Nine on the Kit Fox. Well, let's take the shot. Target acquired. Nope. Not today. Now, I could close with a scorpion, but it's just going to get its ass handed to it if it gets too close. We really need to get some good vehicles here. So in the last battle, uh, we were able to knock down an avatar and the pilot got put unconscious. I hear ya. So we've been there's been discussion back and forth about implementing Frankie mechs. Moving out. So we've been talking about like taking one turn of repairs. So if you've taken the head off a mech, you can there's a chance you can put a Frankie together. So we're going to, I think, implement that for this uh, playthrough here. Tell me what to shoot. So we may put together that avatar. you got to keep it as close to the original as possible. So we did pick up the Ultra 20 with it, uh, which it had on it, one of its arms. And I, I did bring it back from the um, yes, storage perfect. just to see what it had. And sure enough, the... Um, the Ultra 20 was destroyed, so we'd have to replace it with the exact Ultra 20 and get the rest of it as close to uh, as close to the original as possible. Whoa, two misses, really. Can't be doing that. So we lost one of the MMLs. The ER large pulse laser remained. So the MML-5 that was there, I'll probably replace with an LRM-5. It's as close to what the original was as I could get, I think. And then the rest of the components. There was this C3 uh, Master that unfortunately I don't have to replace. So I might just add like a Beagle Probe or something like that. I don't know what. You gotta get close. Waiting for orders. We gotta get close. Mm. On the move. Back shots, no whammies. All right, now if we do active mode. So why does it say ECM jamming on these guys? 
It shouldn't jam their ECM. It should be protecting them, right? Like, we have a four sensor deprivation against this unit in passive mode. I think it's three in active, and then it takes the one and, and puts it on these guys here. I don't know. I don't know why it's doing that. Counter jamming protected. Maybe it's only really good close up. I don't know. Well, once we close with this island, I'm not going to take the base right away. Because whoever goes in the base is going to be... Um, oh, they got a thumper or something back there. That's just a Clint. What is this guy? Another Clint. Okay. Um, whoever goes in the base is going to get targeted. Orders. I think you can probably successfully move over this way. Heading out. There's not a lot on that side that's going to be threatening to this Ostrock right now. So, where is the? I uh, guess the Kid Fox. Twenty-three. Much better on this guy. We will take it. Let's drop the sensors down there too. We'll just use one this turn. Okay, so that was pretty good damage. Excellent. Threaten to take both those arms. I'm receiving you. Now. 25. 7. Let's take the shot at this guy. Confirm. Yes. Torso hit. Cobra strike. Commander. Commander. All right, time to move out. They're not targeting you with long range, so we'll stay out in the open. Give us a little better chance to hit, and we will dump some thunders on this guy. Let's go with... Let's go with Faint. Such a low chance to hit. It's the same damage, such a smaller chance to hit, but if he's got an AMS, it'll be harder to hit the missiles. No, he doesn't. Come on, at least land one. Nope. I suppose that's a myth. You suppose? You suppose? So there's got to be two other mechs back here. Or two other something or other. So we've got two Clint C's and a Jenner 2 C. Now I did turn the salvage up a little bit on this one. Only because... Like normally I've been leaving them from all my missions. I've been kind of leaving it in the center. Just so we get some good C bills. Because I can't put any anything that we recover into the max anyway so you're better off because we're we're all searching for missions to leave the um standing by to leave the uh ooh, do we want to move up this far or not i don't think we do can we get behind the rock over here though can't really being in the water is a bad a bad thing to bad place to be too I know we got a Clinton and Jenner over here. I don't know if they're going to be able to see me though here. Let's just go here. Got a little bit of cover there. Yeah, they can't see me. Okay, good. So let's hammer this guy again. Giving him everything I've got. Oh, you kidding me? Dude. Oh, come on. That's what I just said. What's up, boss? Okay, we're going to jump this one. Get a little bit more evasion on it because we're getting a little closer here. We'll fire on this guy again. Yes. Good night, sweet prince. Target neutralized. Two large pulses off the board. Sweetness. Yeah, so we've all been having problems finding missions. I think I've got a way to solve that. I mentioned it in um, the HQ playthrough at the end, but I'll mention it as we're going through this one as well. So I think what we're going to do um, after this campaign is over is I'm going to ditch the um, idea of the mobile units where there's a big stack of mobile units and you choose the skull rating of the guys you're going against and all that. Um, and I'm going to swap it out to 
doing the same thing that we're doing for our guys, and that is having fixed units on the board. And each one will be a fixed skull unit mission. So like two and a half skulls, um, one skull, whatever they are. Um, and I've got them set out into light, medium, heavy, and assault mechs. So light mechs will be 0.5 skulls to one and a half skulls. Um, and those mechs can have beagle active probes. Like the unit will have a be could have a be beagle active probe or stealth. Uh, the rules for that will be applied later. Um, wow, that was terrible, buddy. Someone's getting an AC-20 to the back. Um, and then medium lances are two skull to three and two skull to two skull to three skull, so two and a half, two two and a half and three. Heavies three and a half and four. And assaults four and a half and five. Right? So that covers the ten stages. Right? Commander. And then we're just gonna move over here. Coordinate. Hopefully we can finish off this guy. Not that guy. Where's the other guy? 32 in the Sentinel. That's a Sentinel back there. Okay. 51 on this guy though, but like this is the guy with damage on him. And we've got the the Hunchback's going to chop up the Ostrock. So let's go after this guy. So yeah, so each one is going to have their own skull rating on the board. And then we're going to have things like artillery and, and air. Air Force. So the artillery is not going to have a value at all to it. Like there'll be no skull rating on it. It'll just be considered artillery. Actually, no, sorry, that's not true. Uh, the way I worked it out is there will be a skull rating for artillery. Or sorry, I apologize. But it will be oh, low, like rough. either 0.5 or 1. And that's the interdiction value that it's got against enemy units. God damn, so bad chance to hit. Let's just take a shot at this guy. Um, so artillery oh, and aircraft on, can be used great. to interdict enemy units or interdict your unit. And if it's used to interdict an enemy, enemy unit, like let's say you've got a, a four and a half skull um, assault lance in front of you and it's planning on attacking you, um, on your turn you can use some of your air assets or some of your artillery assets to go. Um, to go after that unit. So what do we want to do here? This? No? Maybe? Actually, let's... When does Tomahawk go? You already gone. So, waiting for orders. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How does your AC-10 roar? Um, do we want to go after this guy? Um, fourteen. Can we get a shot at that guy? Don't think so. Got much better sprint though. You know, let's put position ourselves up here. I'm just worried about... Like, I thought about shooting the Ostrock in the back, but we got our guy right here, right? And this is a big damage weapon. We don't want to be hitting him in the back. Alright, let's just go here. Nope. Anyway, so, yeah, so if you get the four and a half skull assault unit coming down on you, and you've got a uh, half skull artillery and half skull air unit, you can use them to attack the um, four and a half skull unit on your turn while you're fighting it. That way you can reduce it by like half skull for the artillery, half skull for the aircraft, and then the unit becomes a three and a half skull, and that's the mission you take. So it four. gives like so we'll have the ability to at least have some kind of advantage to um, um, like artillery and aircraft on the board. Because I've always found it weird that, like, you know, yeah, long toms exist, but why aren't you using them to blast your enemies with, right? Jenner, 2.6. No, so I guess we're going to go... See if we can hit the Locust. Here you go, moron. Oh, we're 1 for 18. Okay. 
and we lit a fire. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, I think that'll make things easier. And then for the individual units that you see on the board, um, then we'll just run our normal rules, right? Like so, based on the mission that you take. So if you take a straight up ba val like a battle, then that unit is whatever the skull value is. Um, then we'll just have a, like we'll figure out what the rest of them are. Like so, if you have like if you're escorting an air asset, oh this fucking guy, man. If you're escorting an air asset, what we have to we'll figure out what the skull value will be, uh, whether it's positive or negative, and then for base defenses, we'll just include everything. Like so, recovery missions will be in, like this will be a, included as a base defense. Um, what else? Um, there's a there's a few. Well, obviously the uh, like defend base or uh, attack base or destroy base. Sorry. Um, Destroy base recovery and blackout will all be included in a static defense unit. So there'll really be only a handful of unit markers on the board. And then it'll just be like whatever missions you've got in your your um, your uh, mission feed you'll be able to use. So it'll be, we'll be able to stop that jumping around trying to find specific missions to do specific yes, things. Because um, it really is uh, it's frustrating as hell. It'll just streamline everything. Like it'll make things so much easier, right? Then all you gotta do is focus the unit, as like fo focus um, on what units you can see on the board. And then we have got movement go going on as well. This is the best shot, but we got our uh, tomahawk going after this guy. So let's target. That's what the Jenner. Let's go up to this locust and see if we can bring it down. That's a pretty good chance to hit. Aye, aye. Come on, PPC land. Nope. Going down though. Beautiful. Report. We'll get the AC 10 on it from the other hunchback. Yes. Enjoy it, buddy. So, yeah, I think that'll streamline things. I'm also working on rules for cargo aircraft. Um, so, transferring supplies using cargo aircraft. So, if you've got units trapped behind enemy lines, uh, being able to bring in supplies. Yes, come uh, Also, like I had a look online. So I was very interested to see how much cargo aircraft could actually carry. And surprisingly enough, some of the heaviest Russian cargo aircraft can carry like 200 tons of supply, right? So that's, that's like, that's a lot. I wonder if we target this guy and let the, uh... Mm. Let's see if we can leg this guy. I copy. Bailout. Solid connection on that one. So I'm thinking about using cargo aircraft. Like I mean, obviously in the future, um, that's a falcon. In the future, you know, the way the cargo air aircraft would be built would be differently. Would would be it, cargo aircraft would be built differently, and most likely it would be like a VTOL uh, type of thing. But you could use those to that? transport mechs. So. Um, as opposed to having a drop ship um, to ferry guys around the, the map board all the time where it could actually actually take a lot of damage or something um, you could set we, we can set it up so you can actually ferry stuff by by aircraft if you want to um, things like that so I'm just working on other rules mm. what are we gonna do here could go can we get down any other way we have to go through there don't we See, unit standing in spore field. Does it standing in the spore field? You you get twenty percent more, or is it passing through it as well? Plus four difficulty to hit units passing through spore clouds. Twenty percent damage when hit due to the spore clouds corrosive effect. But that's standing in spore clouds. So if you pick up the spores when going through, I guess it's different. Seems very weird to me. Let's avoid them altogether. <laughs> Let's just jump over here. Fly! Let's try and finish this guy off if we can. Here we go! So get the leg hit, get Let's rid of go. him. And stay down. So yeah, I'm limiting the counters and then the convoys. 
Um, convoys are going to be fixed, so there won't be like a skull value but, uh, per se, like a, like a seven skulls of convoy units and you choose what to attack. It'll be a fixed convoy, so it'll be one convoy at whatever skull rating. And you can use aircraft to interdict it to lower its skull, skull rating or artillery to interdict, interdict it to lower its skull rating before attacking it. Um, so it'll just be a fixed unit. But those won't be used by the enemy to attack you. They're only going to be used to transport supplies back and forth for the enemy. So they'll be they'll be in a in a battle zone where we're attacking them. There'll be a dedicated supply route uh, that they're moving stuff through back and forth amongst the bases. So they'll be you know you may be just going along a certain area and then you'll stumble stumble across a uh, a convoy tra like delivering supplies. So it's a, just a target of opportunity, right? And we could do missions where it's like. You know, you're trying to eliminate eliminate X amount of enemy resources where it's you're attacking the convoys. Trying to destroy as much of the convoys as possible. Alright, let's go here so those guys can't get a back shot on us. These guys back here, that is. And if we go physical weapon, we're at 52. Punch is 46. And this is kick is a lot higher. Still. Well, I got let's go this route. This guy's like underwater here too, so. Yes, enjoy it, buddy. Oh, he's almost, you know what, we might be able to knock this guy's ass down this turn. I'm your spaniel. Are ya? You think you can knock this guy's ass down? Got it, Commander. There he goes. Have a seat, buddy. I think I hit systems, hold it. There it is. Yes, Commander. All right, now, um, ten percent, four percent. That's all right. We want to drop it on this guy. Let's just get the kill on this guy. Ah, I figure it's the first one got him. Well, we got to get our morale up for this guy, so. The more hits, the better. He's going to feel a lot better. He's like, oh, I can do anything now. I'll land some 10% chance shots. So we've got a Falcon, Sentinel, two Clints, and a Jenner over here. And then the one Locust, which has been heavily damaged. All right, fair enough. Let's see what these guys do. But we knew that hunchback was going to be a target, so. Standing by. Okay, how far can you sprint? Not that far, and you can jump like one hex farther. Jump it. Get a bit of evasion. We got sixteen percent and ten percent. See if we can get this guy with a slug. Nope. Save the cluster for a little later when we're getting closer to these guys. I'd rather use it for a higher percentage chance to hit than the extra 6% at 10. He's saving some heat over there, it looks like. Is that what you're doing? So yeah, the, the um, revamp to rules rules 2.0 for the next campaign the campaigns moving forward hopefully are going to be a lot more streamlined a lot easier for the players to, to uh, get battles receiving you um, and plan their moves let's get over to here hmm yeah we've got some Fair bit of damage so far. I don't want to be in the um, water though. It's just easier for them to hit us. Wait, our left sides. Let's go this route. I want to go after one of those clints. So let's do that. This guy right here. 30%, eh? 28 in that guy. 25 on that guy. I wonder what it would have been. 69 on this guy. Oh well. 
All right, let's take a shot at this guy. If we don't get him, maybe we get somebody behind him. Copy that. Well, you got the one low percentage chance to hit, so that's good. At least it makes it harder for him to hit us. Yeah, so like I said, the the room the rules are like a lot more streamlined now. But there's also a lot more functionality to them, so there's there's more than just land, move forward, attack, Waiting land, you, move Commander. forward, attack. There's things to plan out. Like what you want to do with your supply. You, you know, down. because we're going to include um, supply in the battle. X amount of supply every turn. You can decide what you want to do with it. Uh -huh. Yes! So if what like like for instance if one of our guys on the front line loses a mech or vehicle permanently in the battle, we can use a supply um, marker that turn to quote unquote deliver them a new mech. So they take their old mech that maybe that may have got cored and can replace it in the battle, but just by rebuilding it, um, waiting a bit and refueling it again. So we're not going to go by you know in-game turns or in-game days that is. Um, we'll just, just go by, um, you know, arbitrary rules, I guess is the best way to say it. So we can refield stuff Get using inside. supplies. So that, you know, that way if someone ends up with a really bad mission where they end up like, like getting a couple of vehicles or a On couple of way. mechs completely wrecked, uh, we can use some supply to, um, fix them and bring them back online. I want to get rid of this guy. No, what we want to do... That's the Sentinel. Where is the Clint down here? Here he is. Go after this guy. Let's get some sensors over there. Maybe get a tag on him. Okay, nice. That'll help out. Orders? You know, just to, just to make the game a little bit more... Um, I'm walking here. Or the map board's a little bit more um, dynamic, I guess. There's a few... Give you a few more things to think May about. I interest you in some melting armor? And then I was also thinking damage. about... Um, yeah. What can I do depending you on the campaigns, like I don't know how many campaigns we want to run or how many campaigns we're going to end up playing or whatever, but we can do, like have campaign currency, so depending on who hires us, you get X amount of campaign currency which you can use to buy like artillery or airstrikes for the campaign. So, um, it's just a little extra, It, and then, you know, at the end, if you save the campaign currency, you can buy, like, permanent artillery or, um, permanent stuff that you can use in, the f like, future campaigns. So we'll act- oh, come on, hit with something! There you go. So you'll have, like, a, a, you know, like, regimental, um, regimental artillery that's just usable on the map board for everybody. That you can bring every campaign that you drop. Same thing with with air units. We'll have regimental air units, um, or you can hire mercenary air, mercenary artillery for the battle. So if you feel you need extra artillery, or you feel you need extra air units for interdiction, because it's going to be a tough battle, then you can bring them in. I haven't thought about, Commander. but I guess I should probably think about it now that I'm actually here. I haven't thought about what to do about um, gang-banging uh, aircraft. So if you've got four air interdiction units, can you use all four of them on a an assault unit to reduce it from five skulls down to three? You know what I mean? I mean, that should probably be functional. That way we can have really tough enemies. We gotta get you up here fast. Let's get in the trees. Roger. Double time. Can we get rid of this guy? 20. 18. We got more chance to splash it on the guys behind him here, so let's use the LBX on this side. Nope. Fine. Oh wait, we're, we're, we're using slugs, aren't we? Fuck you and your fucking AC tens. Waiting for orders. 
Really? 29%? Well, that's a little better. Don't need to tell me twice. The uh, different the difference between being in the water and not being in the water is massive. Holy crap. Did they really fuck that up in their uh, Oh, well, he walked through the sensors too, so that could be it too, right? Nice. Got past the armor. So yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be doing probably this weekend I'll probably do a video with the new rules, but my next um like Battle for Astrakhazi is still going on. My next um segment in that battle is on the radiated world and we're going to be going against House Merrick, but I'm going to be using these rules for that. So I'm going to segment uh, the Dragon's Rejects and the Night Gaunts into two lances each and create basically two units for them on the map board each. So there'll be four units. Reporting. Heavy damage. And then the Herbies will have their own unit. And um, I'm ready. who else? I think that's it. Oh, I've got my vehicles too, which I might put on the map. But then, uh, and I'll just, I'll just kind of goof around and play test it just so you guys can kind of see what the future would be. Let's go after this guy. Engaging. God, God damn it. Oh, man. That's what I just said. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so, you know, hopefully it makes it exciting, a little bit more dynamic. Um, having to figure out where your resources are going to go. Um, I've always thought that Battletech needed aerospace fighters. Because if you think about it, air power would still rule in the future. Like, why wouldn't you be using air power? Receiving you. Um, do we just stand here and hammer this guy? I think we do. Let's remove him. See ya. Oh, well, there's the knockdown. So he's not dead yet. Yes, he is. So that's... Okay, we didn't blow anything up on him. So that's what I mean about... In the campaigns, if you... if you, That's technically a headshot because the head's off the mech now. Um, but the rest of the mech was intact. So that's the kind of thing where you'd be able to build a, a Clint 2 Frankie. You take a turn. Um, you'd have resources that you would spend. You just want to die. Look at this guy. He's trying to slow down the hunchback, and I, I, I give him uh, something I can do. Give him props for that, but you ain't slowing that hunchback down. The question is now: On the move. Do I want to go? Yeah, it's only 18. Like, chance to hit this thing is so terrible. We're a little danger close here, but I think we fire on this guy. We'll take the best chance to hit. Consider it done. Come on, don't softball this. Okay, three hits, nice. Good CT damage. We go before him too, beautiful. So yeah, the campaign should be interesting. Like, you know, you'll drop in, you'll have all your units there. You can use your supply on turn one to build an air base so you can land your fighters and refuel them and have them for interdiction. You can move your artillery. The artillery will have its own movement. Oh yeah, I also worked on uh, movement rates for uh, lances and units. So light, medium, heavy, and assault will all have their own movement rates. Um, your lance will be, will be rated one of those. And then, Jesus Christ, that leg. And then that's that'll be your movement point for your lance. can't give you any side because it's got PPCs in both arms. I'm gonna try and gangbang that guy. 50 on the Clint. 37. 28. Clint it is. Firing full on the enemy. God damn it. 
dismissed. Yeah, you think? You just cleared all the fucking sensors too, you bastard. I think we just go from here. This guy's gonna get wrecked. Uh, let's go with Slug. I got Leg gone, and then... Critical hit, Commander. Oh, you missed with the AC, you bastard. Failed. Come on, bail out. Nope. Guy's still viable. Okay, that's good news. Retargeting. Commander? Affirmative. Okay, that puts our hunts back in ability to jump up here. Fuck you, buddy. Come on. Let's go, Mary. So I guess we gotta use the Ostrock on that, uh... We gotta get it in closer, too. We gotta use it on the, uh... Locust. Okay. Now the carrier is within range. They're gonna start targeting that. Commander? Because it's so far away though. Oh, for fuck's sakes. What the what? Yeah, I know. Ready for orders. It's not my unit, I can't fire you. Roger, full speed. <laughs> You're like he's got tenure, I can't get rid of him. Uh, we want to target this guy or what? I wish I could multi-target. Oh, that's pretty damn good in this clint, though. This guy's really the threat. Um, let's put some more... So we got two more sensors, so... Oh, sh we missed with the PPC. We're missing so many high percentage chances to hit. This is just really bad. Having to use the Thunderbolt to kill a mech lying on the ground Moving to position. is like the worst. 25. So what else do we have here? We got faint. Let's hope we get it. Alright, I'll give him the whole nine yards. I'd only shoot one or two rounds, but I know if I do that we won't get the guy. Okay, that guy's done. Hostile eliminated. That's it for long range missiles. Right. Let's go to here. Tomahawk's got more armor, so we'll get him up there. We're gonna go after this guy. Confirmed. Nice hit. Inflicted some heavy damage. You did. Commander. Stay in the trees. Got to get rid of this guy. Okay, one of the heavies hit. That's really nice. Good to go. He's stressed, and he damn well should be. We're gonna walk it over here till this guy's gone. Then we'll jump up there. Roger that. God, fucking damn it! Really, it's twice in a row where you miss like thirty percent chance to hit. That's eight shots at thirty percent chance. You just whiffed. ostrox got to get down here. That was 45. I think we got 100 on the front, but still, 130. It's actually not too, too bad compared to some of the other carriers I've seen, but we can't let this guy continuously get hit. Yeah, so it should be interesting to see what the next missions bring. F 
fuck's sakes, this guy and his fucking micro lasers. Jesus Christ, or his ER lasers. I blame that on Mary. She had a chance to fucking end this guy two turns in a row and never did it. Landed, never landed one shot on him. Death by Locust. I await your command. Thirty percent. We'll take it. Succeeded in missing the target. Good to go. Come on, give this guy, give them something to shoot for. Keep that till later. The, pers the number of times you miss with this PPC. I swear to God, I'm ready to pull my hair out. Right here. All right, time to have some fun with this guy. Falcon, you're the guy with the PPC. That's the Clint backed up. Let's just give it to this guy. Giving him everything I've got. Share the heat, baby. Share the heat. Not giving him that much. Surprised they didn't set the jungle on fire, though. All right. What's up, boss? Left this guy standing in the open. Well, they just don't like you, do they? On it. Receiving you. Okay, walk it up, get our stability back. So this is still active, 0% chance of failing. So it's helping these guys a little bit, I guess. Okay, we got through the armor. Reporting. Critical hit. Be interesting to see what this Clint does. We got we're in a good position to jump here and maybe get a back attack, but we'll have to see how it goes here. So the Clint still needs to go. Okay, a little bit of sensors. Yeah, shooting for the wrong guy, buddy. I remember, um, so there was a guy, uh, what was his name now? George, it was not George Phillies. Um, he, uh, had all his, um, classes. He's from, uh, jump up here. Was it UCLA? I can't remember where it was now. I think we got to go up to this Clint's arm. Let's get up to here. That big AC's got to go. Got two standard rounds left. Well, at least you hit with two of them. Not the one I wanted, though. I will be anyway, he had a uh, a, a course in uh, uh, board game development. It wasn't just war games, it was all kinds of board games, right? He's got the largest uh, collection of board games in, in the world. Uh, is the world or the United States? He's got like 5,000 of them or something. He's got some ridiculous amount of them. He's got LB-10X. So we want to go Thunderbolt or we want to go... Or Thermo? I think we do. Let's just go with the Thermo. Maybe it damages his leg enough to take it off. Twenty-eight heat. Ah, okay. That is something good. 
Standing by. All right, okay. how good is your other leg? I'm up on. Not that good. So that's the left leg. Just stay here for a moment. I think we're okay without you. But anyway, yeah, so he was talking about... Um, somebody had mentioned something about large... Like very large battle war games and was, I think, trying to like right posture there. and say, Oh, you know, this is the big... You know, this is so big and that's so big and... Have you heard of this? Yes. And he's like, yeah, I, I, I've heard of that game. I've, I've, I've got the largest board game collection in, in like, I think it's the United States. I'm pretty sure it's the United States or North America. And he's like, yeah, I know that game. I know all of them. And anyways, he started talking about a, uh, a game called, was it the North Africa campaign? I think it was the North, Battle for North Africa or North African campaign. Anyway, um, so this game was so ridiculous in its breadth that people um, right, Commander. Uh, like, the, like the rules and everything for it was so in depth that you had to have dedicated people playing this game that did nothing but logistics. Targeting enemy and that's that's it. All they do is calculate supply, like how much food the army is going to need, how much ammunition, where it needs to go, the vehicles you need to get it there. That's all the person did in the game was figure out supply. Um, but they had people on both sides doing that, right? And there's people that just like super enjoy that kind of thing, right? You know? Um, yeah, I just I just found it really really interesting. Waiting for orders. I mean, obviously, there's not going to be a dedicated person in this game that's going to have to do supply, but we're going to have the ability to at least have some of those elements in the game where you can, um, you know, figure out what you want to do with it, right? Okay, leg gone. Beautiful. This guy's dead. Now we can bring out Haram with the PPCs. Next turn to hopefully finish this guy off. Ooh. Finishing up the remnants. I'm here. 25. Can we not see that falcon anywhere? I don't think so. Alright, so you get the 25%. I'm Here it comes. Yeah, well. But they'll be simple. Like, I mean, supply will be simple. It'll just be an X amount of factors, like three three factors of supply or four factors of supply. And then you just decide what you're going to do with it in the, in the uh, battle. You know? Who gets what, where, and all, that's all it is. Who needs it the most. And then if you don't use it, save it to the next campaign, you know. There you go. He's a stick. He's dead. Mech destroyed. Finally getting some work done. Waiting for orders. Heading don't out. think the Sentinel's got enough juice to do damage to this guy. My mech is limping. Is it limping? Roger. Maybe start landing some heavy shots and then, uh... Critical hit, Commander. You won't have it limping. If you guys had killed that friggin' locust... Go. What if we just stay here? Marginally better. What's your back armor like? Yeah, not that good. Let's deliver the incendiary after the uh, armor piercing and see if we can uh, do some damage here. Roger, Commander. I've got the shot. Nope. I was hoping that the incendiary would, uh, if it hit one of the open areas, would uh, do some crits, but not likely. What are you doing, you sneaky bastard? He's like standing beside me now, shoulder to shoulder. Hey, what's up, buddy? Just gonna shoot at your vehicle, do you mind? Ready. He did not get a chance to get these guys. Engaging jump jet. And I will not fire this this close. Yeah. Ooh, that was bad. 
right between the two of them. Ready for orders. This I'm not too worried about. Let's just leave that off though. Firing on target. Ooh, one shot in the hunchback. I saw that one stray off there. Good thing it was Damn follow it. the leader. Uh, Huck. He's gonna keep shooting at you, buddy, so you might as well hit him first. Target. Nope. Not today. Strike one. Waiting for orders. Okay, can we get to a place? Are we got a solid red line? Yep. Hunchback's still really well armored, so. I'm gonna give him the big bubble. You're not giving him anything, dude. Oh, there we go. Ooh, I thought you were gonna hit your own hunchback there for a second. LRMs are gone. Aye, aye. Let's leave this one off so it doesn't splash over. Locking on target. Ooh, I thought that was going to be a headshot, but we'll take the torso. Ultra 5's gone, though. Oh, well. Can't have everything. Alright, Mary, he's all yours. Moving to position. Ask him how his flowers grow. Uh, yep. Affirmative. There you go. Oh, my God. Okay. That could have been really bad. Commander. All right, full sprint. Let's get these. Uh, you got to get down here. Got it. No shooting, just running. So I'm gonna just cut right to the end here. To we'll go. go to the salvage screen after this. I'm just gonna go and grab the stuff out of here that we need, and then uh, we're done. Hunker All right. Down. Well, there we go. So, Haram, I was jumping over there to, to see who could get there first, Bring it home. and he fell and took a wound. I'm not gonna count that though. Um, he, did, he was wounded once, um, but we're not going to count that second wound because that was just me trying to rush to get the uh, the base captured. Normally in a real fight, that wouldn't have happened. So, I guess I need to be more aware. I guess if you're jumping with no leg, there's a good chance you can fall over. I'm just... Yeah, see, it's two. This is only going to count as one wound because that was me being stupid. Um, I'm not going to penalize the, the, uh, the uh, player for that. So uh, we're not going to count that wound, but I mean, we will take 46 day to, days to heal, unfortunately. Um, so let's have a look what we got here. Got clint parts. Like I said, this was the the, the mech that uh, the guy bailed out of, so we could assemble a clint 2C, but um, from the notes that I have, that's not really um, what we're looking for in mechs and stuff. Although the LB-10X might be nice. Um, what else do we have down here that could be good? Clan XL engine. Definitely going to take that. Can't use it this campaign, but between campaigns, we can definitely install it. What else do we have down here? Omnipod hand and lower arm. Um, and then LBX. So we've got LBX cluster. We've got one of these anyway. We have slug. No slug. Clan Pharaoh. I know that was one of the things that we were looking for because it's got a built-in case. I think we were looking to replace... Um, the standard Pharaoh in the Ostrock with that. To get cased ammo. Beagle Probe. We've got four of them. <laughs> I guess we don't need that. Uh, Clan SRM-6. Hmm. Think about this is like one and a half tons. It's so light. Regular SRM ammo. If we had Inferno, maybe, but I don't know. I guess we could go. Well, how many? Don't have any Clan ER mediums. Large pulse. You know what? Let's go with the LB10. And I'm thinking we're just going to grab the cluster ammo. Let's 
But it's not very often I use slug. You gotta have a really good chance to hit with slug. And at that point, you're usually in close to the enemy anyway. And the LB, like the LBX 10, there's a minimum range, I think, before it clusters. Or before it frags, that is. So as long as you're inside that minimum range, it's going to act like a regular slug round anyway. So especially if you're meleeing, it's going to act as a slug even though it gives you the cluster percentage chance to hit. So you're almost better using cluster like pretty much all the time. In those rare instances that you, rare instances that you need slug, you know, like I said, most of the time you're close enough that it's just going to be a slug anyway. So, okay, we'll go with this, I guess. All right, two clint parts, Kid Fox, Ostrox, Sentinel. Meh. Medium Pulse Clan, 240 core, fire control system standard, we don't need. SLDF will hang on to, we got two of them, so we don't need that one either. Jump Jets, we've got 12, that can go. Basic sensors can go, and these will hold on to. All right, so Black Mamba's uh, injury from the last time, there was two of them, will be reduced by one now. This, this turn has gone by, so both Haram and Black Mamba will be out for one more turn. Um, so maybe next turn it'll just be a movement turn and not an attack turn and then we'll be back to full strength but uh, that will be the end of the turn th turn three um, base attack mission for Conrad's commandos uh, so I'm going to end this here I hope you enjoyed it if you did drop a like if you haven't subscribed please feel free to subscribe you can also drop your comments in the comment section down below and please check out any other videos that are in the description section of the turn three video um, I'm sure that's how you got here, but if not, um, go back to the Turn 3 video for the Battle of Lhasa and check out anybody else's playthrough. Alright, until next time, we'll see you later.